I think we can start. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am here to present about uh, WL internals of PostgreSQL and uh, a brief detail about the Oracle uh, w, uh, WL and then some comparison between uh, WL of PostgreSQL and uh, Oracle, which can uh, and some of areas uh, I will try to point out which we can improve in PostgreSQL. So first of all, uh, I would like to tell briefly about myself and my purpose of being here in the PGCon or uh, community. So I am working in Huawei from last four years and uh, I have worked in, uh, previous to that I had worked in Oracle and I have more than 11 years uh, of experience and mostly my work was uh, into databases uh, like Oracle, PostgreSQL. We have some in in house in memory database of small footprint. So this is a, a more, more or less about my work. And now uh, basically Huawei also has started using PostgreSQL in some of its uh, telecom applications um, and uh, like operation management unit for managing the configuration data and. Uh, we have observed and we want to work on its uh, improving the performance or reliability in the PostgreSQL uh, with respect to telecom. And I have done some detailed analysis for uh, PostgreSQL uh, uh, about its design, which I am going to present now. So this is as I have explained in the beginning that uh, something of uh, redo or uh, what is the general terminology redo, uh, redo uh, in PostgreSQL then Oracle and then improvements in PostgreSQL and some detail for one of the improvements I will show some detailed uh, algorithm uh, how it can be improved. So uh, first of all uh, I think most of us know already about the redo. Uh, redo logs actually uh, contain all the changes uh, made to a database and the redo log files are used for mainly for three purposes. First is recovery, then uh, incremental backup and point in time recovery uh, and replication, uh, streaming replication. Um, so another thing is that uh, Everything, whatever we write to a database file or uh, data buffer, uh, it has to be first go into the redo log file before going into the uh, uh, data file. Uh, that's why I think it's termed as WL write ahead log. Uh, that first write the log and then uh, make the actual change in the database. This is to ensure the uh, that uh, the database. Uh, Asset properties. So basically, uh, now redo contains two things. One is uh, redo log buffers, which are in memory, and the redo log files. So at every commit, uh, the redo log buffer is flushed to the redo files. And also, for some of the performance or uh, some of the system where they are not uh, worried about some of the changes being lost. Uh, uh, they can uh, make uh, the commit more to uh, uh, something like asynchronous or uh, make the synchronous mode as off, which will uh, allow the background writer process to flush the redo in one chunk instead of uh, doing it every commit. So another important point is that uh, redo is not required for temporary tables because any after a crash or server down, temporary tables uh, do not uh, contain the data. So this is the about definition of redo. So now we will go about uh, how it is uh, implemented in the PostgreSQL. Before that, I would like to explain some of the uh, jargons which will be used throughout my presentation. So uh, as I have explained that uh, for uh, uh, redo 
or W L, there are two uh, things. One is that in the memory it uh, writes at every operation, and other is it is flushed to disk. So, in Postgre, W L terminology is used for the uh, in context of transaction log files, and X log is the uh, transaction log which is used in context of transaction log buffers. And then there is a uh, uh, LSN, uh, which is used very frequently in the code. It is basically a log sequence number uh, of a particular location of a uh, where the current uh, W is. And this value is stored in all the data pages. That I will explain why and how it is uh, used. And then there is a common uh, DG writer, which is actually a background writer. Uh, it is used to flush all the shared buffers uh, data and perform checkpoint. In 9.1, I think now in 9.2, they have uh, it has split it to different processes. And uh, CLOG is used for connect log, like uh, basically all the uh, status. For each of the transaction, whether uh, a transaction can have three status, whether in progress, aborted, uh, or uh, commit. So to maintain it, uh, it uses the C log uh, for that. So every transaction is basically needs to bit to uh, do that. And then there is a very uh, common term, like maybe most of the DBAs or the database users have faced this that a partial time write problem which most of the databases have to handle. This is basically when uh, like during checkpoint or the digital uh, writer uh, while flushing the data pages or the shared buffers, if it crashes in, in between while uh, flushing a data page. So to handle that uh, situation, uh, every database has its own implementation. But that problem is known as the partial page write in general. So now we will go uh, about how the detailed implementation of uh, redo logs in the PostgreSQL. In uh, PostgreSQL, uh, redo logs are uh, known by WL, write ahead logs. And as I have told, it, it is ensured in the code that, uh, or it is ensured in the design that uh, the new the data has to uh, go to the disk before the actual changes in the data page to ensure uh, recovery. And how to uh, to guarantee uh, that it should get done? Like I will mean, tell that uh, the, it stores LSA number in each data page. Like when you make any change to a data page, uh, corresponding uh, as a number, which is a domain uh, location up to which it has to be written, is stored in each data page. So, at any time, uh, either by the background writer, by checkpoint, or by the backend, whenever it has to flush any page, it, it ensures that uh, the domain uh, from the X log uh, buffers has been flushed to this uh, point. So this will ensure that all the uh, uh, WL uh, uh, gets to the disk before the actual database changes. Uh, so uh, what this will ensure is basically uh, like uh, for uh, because we are storing each data page uh, the LSA number, like it will uh, ensure that unnecessary WL uh, should not be flushed from the X, X log to the WL files. Otherwise, uh, uh, some other implementation could have been that uh, before starting a checkpoint or something, ensure that all the uh, X log is flushed to WL. But because Postman is storing uh, the ISN, so it can ensure that only the necessary uh, uh, X log can be flushed to WL files. And again, this temporary uh, table operations uh, are not logged. So 
now i will uh, go a little bit about uh, how to redo or uh, 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 i will use the terminology redo because in general oracle has or the some of the databases has redo but i think it should not be confused it is uh, the same as wl so uh, now i am going about explaining uh, like how for each of the operations what kind of contents each uh, uh, wl uh, corresponding to the box log in box log buffer gets generated so for the insert operation uh, like this so th this is the contents of the uh, uh, wl about this so if you can see that <coughs> it one point is it all the values it is it is storing apart from that there is some header information also it has to store uh, something like transaction id length of the uh, total uh, redo and uh, type of redo so those are the uh, basic uh, co uh, contents of uh, wl uh, required in the xlog buffer And for the update, actually, uh, when I see the update in the Postman, which is quite different from uh, some of the other databases, that uh, we can see that even if we update one or two fields out of uh, all the fields, it will generate the uh, XLog for uh, corresponding to all the fields. As well, it has to keep the old tuple ID, new tuple ID, and uh, the general information for. Yeah, this is really, uh, really useful. And I, I've never actually seen it presented before, so it's very exciting to see. Um, on the on the update slide, the C2 at the bottom, is that? Is, I'm confused why that's a four. If the one of four is coming across, should that be a five, maybe? You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the update at the bottom. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. C2. Oh. Actually, uh, See, uh, this is just uh, about, uh, yeah, this, this should be uh, 5. Okay. This should be 5. Uh, yeah, I think this is my presentation mistake. Uh, typo error. Okay, I shall uh, change this. Um. The main idea about here showing is that uh, the, about the contents, that it uh, stores the contents of all the row. About the modified fields. And about uh, uh, delete, uh, the only, uh, only thing it uh, stores is the tuple ID and uh, some of the general information about uh, transaction ID and length and type of the record. So, this is the uh, basic contents of the Uh, w X log buffer. So one of uh, my purpose of showing the detailed contents over here is in uh, general explaining, and other one is that I want to compare the contents what Oracle uh, generates in its redo as compared to the Postgres, so that we can see how the W uh, uh, comparison between Oracle and Postgres is. So th these are the two purposes of showing in detail about the contents of the. WL. So uh, this is a small uh, snapshot of an algorithm that how many WL uh, action is recorded in the XLog buffers. So whenever like a new operation, insert, update, or delete, uh, can uh, so the two things it has to do. One is it has to update the data page, map the data page as dirty. I put that uh, and generate the uh, xlog uh, record and put the same in uh, xlog buffers. So to achieve that, uh, this is the small algorithm that it has to first uh, take the exclusive log on the buffer which contains the data page. And uh, then basically it starts a critical section to ensure that if any problem happens during this 
it should generate a time error. And then, uh, uh, because whenever it comes to insert, update, or delete operation, it only has the uh, data. So it will uh, get the corresponding buffer to apply it and apply the changes to the buffer, mark the buffer as ready, and uh, then it will be required to insert on the actual buffers. And then the last operation, as I have told it, in each of the data range, it will put the log sequence number uh, from the generated from the X log uh, data. So there is one uh, important point here that I have uh, noticed that only it marks the buffer as dirty uh, before uh, generating the record. So the details actually are not very important about WL, but it is in general uh, the to reduce some uh, contention for the uh, uh, buffer writing. Any doubts? Okay. So now we will. Uh, this was the basic algorithm. Now we will try to see what are the important components in a post implementation. Like what are the important logs? What are the important data structures it uses to uh, achieve the uh, WL actions? So the first important uh, lock it has is a WL insert lock. So this lock is mainly used to uh, put the data in the XY buffers. Right now the algorithm is such that uh, no two backends can uh, simultaneously write to the XY buffer, which will be ensured by uh, WL insert lock. So uh, 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 this is one thing which I have told that uh, while writing the data to the XY buffer, and other places where uh, this lock is used in the possible SQL code is like even uh, at the time of commit or the other operations where we have to flush the actual uh, buffers into the uh, files, uh, it, it takes this lock to ensure that uh, any more uh, data will be generated in the actual buffer so that at the time of commit it can flush all the data. And uh, uh, there is an uh, in the during the checkpoint, it notes the reason location uh, from where it has to start replaying during the recovery. So to uh, note that also, it uh, takes this log. And uh, during uh, online backup to enforce the full page rights. So the main point is here. Uh, other than okay, I think the the contention point in WL uh, insert lock is about uh, it does not allow currently uh, to have two backends to simultaneously write into the log buffer, which we will see how uh, uh, like it can be improved or if there is any problem in it. And the uh, other important lock uh, which uses uh, WL write lock. So, as we know for uh, writing WL, uh, we, we are discussing from the beginning there are two, thing, two different parts. One is writing into the actual buffer, another is to flush the actual buffer into the uh, WL file. So, uh, th this work is basically taken to flush the uh, data down to file. So, uh, And other places where uh, it gets used is that uh, during switch of X log, uh, and uh, basically you know, when it for, tries to follow the X log buffer to uh, write an X log data into a buffer, sometimes all the buffers in the memory are full, so it has to flush one of the existing buffers into WL file. So at that point of time also uh, to find the appropriate xlog new buffer, it has to take this uh, lock. 
So these are some of the important uh, places where this lock is used. And uh, another important point now is about the law for naming uh, convention uh, used in the PostgreSQL. So the, uh, there are always uh, for any files uh, generated for WL, there are uh, 24 uh, different uh, letters are used. So I will explain uh, in brief uh, like about the naming and how the uh, WL file naming convention is used to represent a WL file. So the first uh, First eight uh, digits, like two zero zero two. It is. It shows the terminal ID. I think uh, terminal ID is uh, day before uh, yesterday. Friends of mine has also explained. It is about knowing uh, that uh, when we do the uh, like uh, transfer from uh, one uh, node to another node, like it it will tell us that okay uh, now the other node has switched to some other timeline. So after doing the uh, Switch over or fall over to another node. This number is incremented once. So this number is used to depict that. And uh, the uh, uh, next eight digits are representing the logical X log file. So and the last one are to represent the physical uh, X log file. So, what is the difference between this logical and uh, physical units? Uh, are something like in the post way, all of the files, uh, uh, the files are which we share, uh, which we say in the PHX log uh, directory, are not actually the uh, complete files. They are known as uh, subnets. So, one file contains uh, multiple uh, subnets. So. This is what the like uh, the second one digits will explain the file, and actually last will explain the physical uh, segment about it. So, and each segment contain uh, blocks of 8K. Here, right, what I have understood is that we have kept the WL uh, so the actual buffer size as 8K because it has uh, full time write mechanism where in some of the operations it has to. Uh, even first the whole data page. So, and the data page size is also 8K. So, minimum uh, W or uh, X log buffer size also has to be 8K. Each block of uh, X log. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I got There is just one of the interpretations I uh, got it that it will be always better to uh, if we can write uh, over one. So this is uh, and this is one of the uh, uh, segment uh, which we can see. This is what uh, Andrew also uh, uh, told that even the normal behavior also uh, it will be same as uh, something like this that each of the blocks will have the segment header and the block header. Basically, the first block of the segment will have the segment header and others will have each of the block header and then all the WL records are there. So, and even when a WL record can uh, uh, spread across uh, multiple blocks, like we can see from here, uh, number 5 uh, uh, is splitting over 2. Uh, so, th this is the way our uh, WL files are uh, data internal contents are getting stored. Uh, sorry, uh, that what it, uh, I am going to say is that it is not actually a full file. It is one segment. Yeah, so one file consists of uh, multiple segments.
So uh, that another thing we uh, go through in the postman code uh, most of the time is uh, we say that XML switch. What is this XML switch and like why we need, need to do the XML uh, switch in the code or in the design? It is basically to switch from the current segment to uh, the new segment. And the operations uh, where uh, common operations where we need to switch the X log segment is uh, like uh, at some archive time, like when the archiver uh, tries to archive the WL. So it it cannot archive until uh, somebody is writing on that segment file. So it will uh, switch uh, another log X log switch. And uh, at, at the time of uh, shutdown also, uh, so first of all, basically whenever the archive is required, it has to switch so that uh, uh, the files can be archived. Another is at the time of uh, online backup. No, no, that is actually logical dump. Uh, I am not aware that exactly the which tool or which utility is used to uh, take the online backup, but basically the online backup is when the normal operations are. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I told. I don't know the uh, utility from the top, but when the operations are going on and you want to take a backup, at that time also you want to switch because you want that to come into backup. Uh, not checkpoint, like you need to uh, back up from one location to another, so you don't want uh, uh, that somebody writing to that. Yes, yes. Uh, what is the buffer file, right? Yes. Uh, so, now this is uh, the about the uh, like when, whenever we uh, move the synchronous mode as of. So that uh, multiple uh, at the time of commit, uh, not uh, every commit uh, should flush the X log data to WL files. So basically, this mode is uh, actually used, uh, and it has been for two purposes. One is like some people doesn't care even if uh, there some of the data is missed uh, out of the data uh, database, and uh, on the other side, it will improve the performance because it will uh, reduce that at every commit it has to do the I/O. Uh, so what happens when the asynchronous commit uh, in the asynchronous commit mode is that uh, whenever the manual backup does any commit, uh, it only just update the delay uh, uh, record pointer up to which the the one needs to be flushed for that commit. And uh, in the ACA commit mode, it, it is ensured that in maximum three uh, cycles of the memory writer, it, it can uh, flush the uh, buffered data. So why this uh, three, uh, like why we cannot flush everything in one shot? A small reason about this is that, like, uh, so sometimes when uh, uh, let's say we have discussed the block of 8k size and it is half filled, so it will not try to uh, flush it because unnecessary uh, it has to uh, flush it when some more uh, data will come into this. This is important for this is okay for the async uh, commit mode because anyway user has already configured it to uh, such that it can uh, lose some data. But uh, the designers it can uh, save uh, some of the uh, unnecessary IOs. So in the AC commit mode, uh, uh, now there is one uh, important point to uh, be taken care, and uh, which is taken care well is that because even uh, at the commit it has not flushed the domain uh, to the files. But it has uh, updated the transaction status in the serial files or the serial buffer. So, so the important point here now it becomes that uh, every token has some hit bits 
which will uh, uh, be actually uh, marked as whether that uh, company has a connected transaction ID or not for the visibility checks. So, in this kind of cases, it has to be ensured that if the data is not flushed from X, X1 uh, buffers to the files, we should not update that hint bit uh, so that uh, it can be connected because uh, if we do that, it can uh, flush the uh, data page. Uh, and if it flushes the data page, it will go in the wrong status because actually the data is uh, some double corresponding to it is not flushed. So you're, you're saying that because we're not, because it's asynchronous commit, we don't know if that commit might be lost, so we can't set the hint bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we cannot set because uh, if the uh, database gets flushed, it, it can be a problem. It is on the uh, um, buffer because once it is updated in the buffer, it will it can go into the disk also. So, yeah, and it should not update uh, the hint bit. So, I have started with uh, the partial page write problem. So, the PostgreSQL has a diff, uh, different mechanism from other databases how to protect the partial page write uh, problem. So, the point is that, uh, that as I have told in my definition, that whenever any uh, backend, either BG writer or checkpoint, it tries to flush a page, and if the page is half flushed, that means uh, this problem has came uh, partial page right. So, to answer that, uh, what PostgreSQL does is that after every checkpoint is done, it uh, if any operation is done on a page, it will ensure that all the page is uh, put into the uh, log. So, uh, log. So, with this, it can ensure that even if the sum of the pages. Uh, any box or any, uh, uh, in any mechanism, there can be one page which can be half written. So, it can uh, basically overcome that. So, we will see other databases how they protect or not protect. But this is the mechanism of uh, the PostgreSQL. And similarly for the domain, uh, it has a CSA uh, calculation uh, at the, uh, in each of the X log record. And then the unit number is also stored at the header of the each page to ensure that after the come up that everything is okay. It is not uh, so now we will go into some of the key data structures used in Postgre to uh, implement uh, the X log uh, things. So, first one is the X log uh, record data. So, uh, uh, this uh, data structure contains actually the information about uh, the transaction ID and the CLC ID of the previous things, and it stores the total length. And, uh, and there are some in information bits, uh, which we call info bits. It is basically uh, to indicate whether, like, during four page, uh, right? Whether there is any backup block or multiple backup blocks are present uh, in the X log record. And then there is a resource manager ID to indicate the resource of the log record as we have seen in the format originally. So, uh, I think this is about the uh, exact data contents uh, of the. X 
maximum record. So, the important things are uh, like whenever there are backup pages, backup pages are mainly for uh, when it is to do the full time writes. So, th those are uh, stored as uh, chain. There are very few cases where multiple backup pages are required, but in some cases, so it will store it as uh, uh, chain of multiple pages. And then uh, actual data of the record and the buffer associated with the data. So, those are some of the uh, uh, information which is uh, stored in this uh, data structure. I do not think so it is there, but why do you think it is required? Um, it might be useful for query analysis. Query analysis actually, huh? It's in the log commit records, but it is not in every normal Normal message it is not there. And this is about the backup block, uh, uh, which is used uh, for ha storing the uh, full page uh, data here. So, uh, basically, one thing uh, it does is uh, like I if the page is not full, uh, means it is not full and it has some active nodes inside. So, uh, what the uh, postman does is that it can uh, compress the uh, domain required for that, so that unnecessarily it does not contain too much uh, data. So, it can uh, effectively reduce some value for uh, the pages which have some holes. So, it, it stores some information about uh, that, that part of the thing in the backup block structure. So, now this is a brief introduction about uh, the WI mechanism in the PostgreSQL. And we will uh, now see some of the advantages. Uh, I think there will be uh, more advantages and disadvantages to it. This is just a my interpretation of that PostgreSQL has uh, these advantages. Uh, so, one of the advantages uh, feature of the PostgreSQL, which uh, Oracle or other, some of the other databases does not have that. It is ability to perform transactional details. Like it can roll back also some of the uh, details. So, that, uh, that is uh, not uh, present in other things. And that, like I have told, it can use the errors uh, for some of the uh, pages which contain uh, less full data. And uh, Important thing is that the uh, uh, data written for insert and delete operation uh, is uh, comparatively lesser than some of the other databases, commercial databases. We will see how it is less when I will explain uh, the information stored in our database. So, uh, the other point is that uh, during asynchronous connect, uh, it always uh, fl uh, flushes the data in the blocks and one point I have mentioned also that when, when the block is uh, totally fed, only at that time, it, uh, in most of the cases, it will flush. So, this will ensure the appropriate usage of the IO bandwidth. And the other point was that uh, keeping the log sequence number on each of the data page, which ensures that only 
uh, appropriate memory needs to be flush, not the all uh, for the operations done till that moment. So now some of the disadvantages uh, which I think are like uh, the only of the full time back mechanism. Uh, in the, uh, if the synchronous connect mode is on, which in most of the critical applications people do, it flushes the total data page contents uh, in the back end uh, operation, which is uh, very heavy. Uh, the other people, uh, MySQL or uh, Oracle, we see, even if to uh, protect the password they will never use the mechanism where uh, the backend has to. Uh, flush so much data to protect the partial page right. So this is one of the difference I found. And the other major point was that update uh, even let's say there are 100 columns and it only updates one or two columns. It still flushes uh, all the papers and flushes all the uh, WL, uh, sorry, all the record uh, to the WL. So that is one point and I am not sure in uh, other uh, use scenarios how it is, but in our telegram scenario, I am showing you one example like or in one of the most common scenarios that this is a very common use scenario in the telecom that uh, only very few fields are updated and there are actually only around 50 to 100 fields uh, in the table. So the basic the basic point of uh, postgre mechanism compared to is that it has a more non hour writing storage means uh, it will for any update it will insert a full new row. So WL is for uh, full thing, but uh, it is the correct mechanism. However, it can be improved to only do the. So this is the point. Actually, uh, the agenda of my presentation is also like that. And then I will show some of the methods by which it can be improved. One of which has been already suggested by Simon Leakes few years back. And one of the methods I have thought of. So we will see some comparisons about how it can be improved. Uh, so other point is it, it like as we have seen also about the hit bit that uh, in the asynchronous connect mode, we cannot update the hit bit. So the point is that uh, when the asynchronous connect mode is on and it comes uh, to scan the row or the tuple, uh, it has always to know, uh, because we have not updated the hit bit, it has to always uh, refer the transaction status in the serial uh, buffers. And sometimes it, it may uh, happen that it has to do some arrow to just check the transaction uh, status of the tuple. So this is. Uh, Does the hit, hit eventually set at some point? I mean, you can't. You said you can't set it initially because you have to wait for. Yeah, it, it can set. If uh, if it is able to ensure that okay, it, uh, the the is flush, then it will. I believe it will be set. That is what I am told also that uh, and another point is about calculating the CRC uh, for each of the record and uh, this can be especially costly when we are doing the full page writes and moreover uh, because uh, like I have mentioned here that it, it does not allow two backends to simultaneously write in the log buffer. So, uh, having CRC also into that means the contention as well as the uh, things uh, are very costly. Due to CRC, it becomes more costly. I just want to say that. So, now I will go to some of the other implementation in Oracle. So I wanted to know if any. Uh,
Okay, I think time is also running and my body thing is now down actually. I have to go, uh, actually my experience should be part of the oracle uh, is very quiet but I just want to show that how the Redo oracle but time is now little less left. My main idea is to compare the how the value and the value of oracle and Postgre is. So I will try to focus more on that part which is in the latest slides and uh, less on actual data contents of uh, Oracle because only the important points I will cover during my uh, comparison uh, stage. So here, uh, like uh, the uh, boxes in the memory, they are cut as 500 terabytes which we have uh, 8K. The reason is that uh, what I have heard is that uh, it is because the disk sectors are uh, 500 terabytes so the unit of data can be written uh, fastly, and but it, it again requires that uh, version to version it can change. And uh, so th this is the uh, some information basically that reader now consists some header and the uh, uh, reader records. So I think there is nothing much important here. So uh, uh, we will see we will see how the Postman writes each of the redo. Here uh, the uh, way Oracle uh, manages that mechanism is that for each redo it has a redo record header, and then for each of the specific physical change, it has a change vectors. Uh, what I would say is that Postgre and Oracle there is a slight difference that Postgre for one operation let's say I have done insert on the data page it will uh, just have uh, 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 construct the one uh, full redo and uh, put it in the actual buffer and file. But Postman, uh, sorry, Oracle for even a small touch anywhere, it will generate the redo for that and then uh, combine the total redos. It is known that after the full operation, it will form one redo. Any place it touches anything, it will form a redo required for that. And, uh, then for the full operation combines it and then uh, make that as a, again this is uh, not much important but the redo required header is something like this in the Postgre, so on the Oracle. There are uh, something called RDA redo byte address which is uh, something similar to our LSN but they have a different mechanism to uh, store it. And uh, this is the details how the RBA is identified. Basically, for each log, uh, it is a log sequence number, block number within the reader log, and some uh, particular byte number. And th this is what I have explained as the uh, change vector. For each reader record, different change uh, vectors it will associate. And uh, basically, for any uh, change, it will write one change vector. And uh, for a full operation, there will be a combined set of change vectors which will form the redo record. So, this is uh, some of the uh, like how the change uh, changes are uh, stored in the uh, different change vectors. So, for each of the change, it will first uh, write the length uh, and then the uh, contents of that change. We will see how uh, the contents and uh, change vectors are formed for the operations. I think this is the important point that how it generates uh, for each of the operation the data. Let us say this is an, I have taken specifically an example of update to because I want to compare the update thing. So, uh, for doing the update, Uh, see, it has first change uh, the status in the under header and immediately written one uh, redo for that. So, here also we can see that uh, first it will uh, write a corresponding change in the redo and then perform it in the actual uh, things. So, actually. Uh, because Oracle has an overwriting storage, it has to maintain, uh, maintain some other uh, uh, form to read the read back. 
So this is the actual data block and this is the power ID blocks. So any change on ID ID or the data block, it will require a redo. So uh, this is uh, basically we can say that even if there are two columns, uh, this is just to show that uh, only the change columns are getting loaded into the uh, records. Now it has some extra under the data, but it will not matter because let's say we have hundred uh, columns and uh, we are changing only one or two columns. It is. Uh, it will save more data for radical. And finally, the commit operation. And we will see in brief how it generates the redo. Uh, so, uh, for the whole operation, is, uh, let us say insert, it will uh, generate the uh, redo and the cost money undo to do the rollback. So, we have to update. To update only we have to say the important point is that again it is just recording the columns which are changed. And for particular columns, finally to it will not uh, store any redo information, only undo is maintained and that too is for rollback. So, how the partial page uh, writes in the disk in uh, Oracle is protected or uh, actually in Oracle uh, there is a concept of checksums. We can configure Oracle to use the uh, checksum to verify blocks in the user log files, which will ensure that uh, any partial right it has it, it can detect that. And if the block checking is enabled, Oracle computes a checksum for each redo log block related to the current log. And it uses a header to. Just a minor point is so assuming it uses 
about uh, there is a good mechanism of Oracle which uh, in Postgre 9.2 uh, uh, Postgre also has implemented that it can group uh, the commits during handling operations. Like the background writer uh, can uh, group the commits and flush all the uh, data at one shot. In 9.1 it was not there, but now I think this facility is uh, available in to an extent in Postgre SQL. I am not going into the details, so I cannot tell. Them. So I think uh, these are uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages uh, of Oracle. Update has less CDU as it writes only change data, and it has a group commits facility. And writing only block sizes as hardware or less block size gives the benefit. And another is that now uh, writer flushes the redo whenever it is one third full. Basically, it is some kind of statistics it uses, which will ensure that it has uh, never to reach a situation where any backend has to wait for a redo log buffer. Uh, and, uh, but there is a uh, chance that uh, because uh, every change it requires only 500 terabytes and it flushes it uh, at every commit. So even if that is full or not, it doesn't take care. Like the currently post will take care that the block gets full and all. So whatever out of 500 terabytes, whatever is written, it will uh, flush it. So the sign wasting is there in Oracle, but the uh, time that you can be truncated later, so that sound is recovered. So, radio is not a delete statement, is a I just want to finish, time is late, we can discuss at the end. Radio uh, of the insert and delete SQL statements will be more as compared to Postgres uh, in Oracle because it generates the radio data also for the, uh, it generates the radio for the radio. And as you have seen, uh, there are multiple levels of headers in the uh, record, like one is for the record, another is for the change vector. So this is my interpretation that the size is more in the video records for the Oracle. So these are the uh, important things which I found that Postgre can improve. For update operation, uh, the amount of uh, the real, uh, I don't, I don't need to uh, explain that this is uh, one of the things we can improve. And second, I really is improved on the main point that flushing the data page uh, contains DB commit uh, by the, uh, so the third one is covered uh, that having the group commit concept. But second one also is another thing that uh, in the local, even if during the normal commit operation, the normal backend never Flushes the data, it always gives that responsibility to the log writer that you flushes the data even when the synchronous commit mode is on. And uh, it's, uh, some of the, I think, last two points are very important, uh, which I have found is that asynch during asynchronous commit, uh, sorry, asynchronous during the writer. Should not only write based on the uh, some uh, like uh, time. It should use some kind of statistics so that any backend should never wait uh, for X Y free buffer. And I think the last point already I have seen in the hacker is that some person is trying to implement that. So basically, I have multiple backends to use the X Y buffers uh, simultaneously by using some mechanism that it can pre allocate uh, the. Uh, uh, Space in the XY buffer which is required so that multiple backends can simultaneously write to it. And uh, I think another small point is that uh, to improve the writing of some radio log block again and again uh, during the uh, if it, it, it is half full. Because during the commit, it uh, doesn't take care, it will always flush it. So those are the important points. I think my time is out, so I cannot go into the implementation methods. Now I will discuss with some of the people later.